Hi, I'm Mike. And today we figure out how we get from this to this as we process chickens on our Wyoming Life. Welcome back to our Wyoming Life, where today we are getting ready to butcher chickens. Uh, it's been about eight weeks since this batch that we're going to go and get today have been growing here on the ranch. We're going to talk about the different types of chickens that we have, how and how, or more specifically, how we actually process, process them and get them ready to sell in our farm store, which is located right here on the ranch, uh, further providing more protein to our local community and, of course, income uh, to the ranch itself. I'm going to take you around the shop here where we've got different stations set up for different uh, different steps along the butchering process. And of course, we have to go get the chickens and bring them back. Aaron's going to be here to help us out today as well, so no time like the present. Let's give you a quick tour. Right here is probably uh, the most gruesome part of this entire process, and that's of course killing uh, the chickens. These are called killing cones. The chickens will go in. Uh, we actually uh, slit their throats, or not their throats, but actually their jugular vein. Uh, I try to hit that jugular vein so that they bleed out as they're hanging upside down here. Uh, there's a couple different reasons for this, uh, and it's, it's considered uh, right now the most humanely way, the most humane way to do this. And that's that the chickens go in, they're hanging upside down, all the blood rushes to their head, giving them a slightly euphoric feeling. Uh, when you do bleed them out, uh, they tend to be just a little bit more calm. Uh, back in the day, of course, they used to chop off the heads, chickens would run around and all that kind of good stuff. Uh, that was, that's actually frowned upon now because chickens would run around, they'd bump into stuff, they'd bump into each other and they would actually bruise the meat uh, while the blood was still pumping and that would cause uh, some problems with the processing itself. So this is considered a more humane way to do it. Next step in the process takes, takes place right here. This is our scalder. We're gonna get, heat this water up to about 160 degrees. Uh, we're gonna try to hold it to that temperature. After each chicken is, uh, is considered dead, uh, we're able to move it into this thing. This thing will actually help the feathers uh, come out. Uh, we're gonna dip it uh, for a few seconds, and then we got a quick test to make sure that it's gonna work, and then it's on to the next stage. This thing is our chicken plucker. Uh, you can find a description, or uh, you can find it down in the description if you're looking at getting one for yourself. This thing probably saves us uh, just a ton of time in the entire process. We're going to show you how this works coming up as well. Then it's over to this this area where the chickens are actually. Uh, gutted, uh, all the internal organs are removed, and uh, and then Aaron's getting them ready for packaging. They will actually go into an ice bath, which takes place over here in this container. Uh, they'll get into an ice bath where they'll be lowered down to about 40 degrees. Then we slide them over this way onto this table, which will uh, be where we package them and we put them into their plastic wrapping. So. That's the entire process. Aaron's gonna be down here in a few minutes. We're gonna start sanitizing everything, getting everything ready to go. And uh, I'm gonna go grab some chickens. So why don't you come with me as I do that. Hopefully Aaron will be back down here when we get back. So our chickens uh, live over here in actually one of the high tunnels right now. And this whole process of uh, doing chickens this year, obviously the very first year that we've ever done it, uh, we're, we're gonna butcher about 200 chickens this year. And it's been a learning process the entire way, obviously, uh, just like anything can be, but uh, they are now located right here in this high tunnel. You can see them all hanging out there. So in the high tunnel is where our chickens are living right now. We don't have a whole lot left, but we're gonna try to get about 20 of them done today. And they're all pretty uniform in size, so really all I have to do is them grab some of these chickens. What do is load them up. All right, so we've got our chickens. We either have 20 or 21. I'm not exactly sure. I kind of lost count there, but 
Now we're back to the shop. Okay, so now we're back in the shop. We've got our chickens delivered, and Erin is uh, sanitizing uh, her work area. My area doesn't really need sanitizing, but uh, you're you're working on yours. Can you can you tell us about um, first of all the laws behind doing chickens in the U.S. Because now we're doing chickens, we're selling them at the farm store. Yes. So it's actually a source of revenue for the ranch. We're selling poultry under the the federal poultry exemption, so it allows the sale of. Um, Poultry raised and processed on the ra on the ranch direct to the end consumer. Um, the exemption allows for you to sell under a thousand birds in a year, um, so we're under that exemption. So we don't have to be inspected, and really all of this stuff is kind of up to us to do. So. Um, even in my vegetables and everything, sanitation is something that we, we worry about. You know, I sanitize my bins, my sink, and so I'm just doing the same thing, essentially. Um, and that's why we use like a stainless steel sink for washing, because it can be sanitized. Um, the plastic can be sanitized. And then we've bought a stock tank specifically for chickens. It will never be used for anything else. It's plastic, it can be sanitized. And so Mike will bring the birds over, they'll get put in a bin, I will, take care of them here on the table, they'll get rinsed in the sink, and then they'll go in ice water in the tank. Um, so yeah, everything will be sanitized, and then uh, I think every like three to four hours I would re-sanitize, we probably won't be at it that long today, and then I have a sink full of bleach water in case my knife or anything needs, if I feel it needs to be cleaned. So. How do you sanitize like the tables and that kind of stuff? Yeah, so I just use a bleach spray, so I just have a cleaner that has bleach in it, um, I've also used like Santa T10, um, which kills stuff. So um, the that Clorox cleaner is not actually food safe. So I make sure I rinse it. Santa T10 is food safe. Um, but yeah, just follow whatever the you want to follow for sanitation and stuff. So whatever the the label says, follow that. So like I sprayed that quite a while ago. It's been soaking. I can now rinse it. This is the tank that will fill with ice water. And after Aaron gets done uh, removing the insides and everything else from the chicken that we don't want, uh, they go into this ice water bath. What's the purpose of the ice water bath? We want to get them cooled down as quickly as possible. Um, and so we're just going to have it really full of ice and some water. And they'll just sit in there until we can get them in the freezer. chicken. I'll do this first one kind of uh, uh, slowly so that everybody can get an idea of what we're doing here. These are Cornish cross hens. Um, they're meat chickens. They're bred specific, specifically as meat chickens. They grow fast. They get big old breasts on them and uh, and they're, they're not made for layings or anything like that. Uh, normally you can finish these guys in about eight weeks. Uh, we weren't able to do that. We ran into some weather issues and some other stuff, so we ended up... Uh, I say eight to ten weeks on average. Okay, eight to ten weeks. So once you have the chicken in, this is actually the killing cone. The chicken goes in. Usually I like to give them a little bit of an extra push that holds them in there a little bit better. Their heads hang below. Like I said, they get this rush of blood to their, to their brain, which supposedly causes like a euphoric type experience. Um, using a very sharp knife, I like to use an X-Acto knife with a sharp blade. We're able to cut that vein and the chicken will be able to bleed out. The blood will flow pretty fast. And basically, the chicken just loses consciousness. Um, we do want to be careful when you do cut that you don't hit the windpipe. It's easy to cut the windpipe and then the chicken actually suffocates, which is said to actually um, give them a little bit more pain and everything else. They're going to poop on you. They're going to bleed on you. Um, but uh, like I said, this is the, uh, the non-sterile side of things. It's a stinky side of things. 
Okay, so it can take a couple minutes for the chicken to die. That's why we have four killing cones set up uh, that we can load up. Usually by the time that you get down at one end, you can go back to the other end and uh, nature has taken its course by then. But once the chicken is gone, um, I like to remove the head at this point. So I won't show, I won't, I won't show that, but I'll remove the head for you. Once the head is removed, then we can come over to the bucket. This, uh, or the, the, the hot water, the scalder. This, uh, this is actually a turkey fryer that we have repurposed to do this. We keep the water, like I said, about 160, 165 degrees. There's a bunch of different ways to measure this. Uh, we have a uh, basic kitchen thermometer type thing stuck in here. We also have electronic thermometers that you can use. Um, these are pretty handy for getting your temperature. Just keep in mind that Depending on uh, the quality of them, they may be a little bit off. This one's showing about 150 degrees. And of course, who knows how well they work on water. Okay. Chicken goes in. I usually like to hold it under for a few seconds and then kind of dunk it in and out. Okay, and then what you can do is grab these feathers. These are usually the hardest feathers to remove. They're right up by the top of the leg, or the bottom of the leg, the top of this part. And then you start picking them off. They come off pretty easy. They're gonna do pretty well in your defeathering. Then it's over to here. This machine is actually made by Kitchener. Uh, you can find it on Amazon. Uh, I'll put a link down in the description if you're looking for one yourself. This thing's pretty handy. All you need is some water. Hey, turn it on. Now it comes a naked chicken, almost. At this point, I like to go through and just click off any feathers that we didn't get. All the feathers, and I forgot to put this up, but this is, it has a, uh, a spout here down at the bottom. This is where all the feathers are gonna come out. Uh, what we like to do is I, we actually took a bucket, drilled holes in the bottom of it. It sits there and then it catches all those, those feathers, which are great for compost. Once it's done, and it's over here where Aaron takes over. So once Mike puts it in a bin, it's now my job to work on him. Um, so I like to have a really sharp knife. We've got a bucket for some um, insides. And the first thing I do is just kind of give a look to him, make sure he doesn't have any feathers. This guy's a bit fatty. Um, Underneath the wings, sometimes they'll hold a few feathers and they just rub off at this point, but I'm just making sure to get all those off because obviously we don't want to give our customers feathers. So first thing I do is take the feet off. It's a bend, you can feel the joint. Nice sharp knife, that's off. I like to start on the top end first. So spread the neck, take, pinch the skin, very lightly cut through the skin. Right there is its esophagus. So we're gonna go back towards its neck. I'm gonna grab as much of the esophagus as I can and I'm gonna get underneath the esophagus and I'm gonna pull. Out comes the esophagus. I'm gonna pull the neck through that skin. And then I'm just pulling the skin and I'm looking for the craw, which is the sack right here that they're actually their food goes into. So I don't wanna break it. So I'm actually just peeling it away from the skin 
and then it's kind of just stretching it. And I'm looking for the tube that leads down into the stomach. Stretch it out as much as we can. Sometimes you can get them to kind of break loose and, and pull. This one doesn't want to pull. So I'm just gonna stretch it as much as I can and go in and cut it as far back next to the neck as I can. And then we're gonna take all of this skin that we don't need and just give it a cut. Okay, now we're gonna spin the bird around and we're gonna deal with the back end. Okay, so we wanna leave all of this skin intact. So I'm gonna grab down here. Again, just very lightly cut through the skin. And then I'm gonna make a hole. Okay, so there's actually, we're inside the chicken already, and you can see that's actually the gizzard. So now I'm gonna go with my left hand, and I've got a neck as kind of a handle, and we're gonna start pushing stuff out. So I'm going up all the way towards the top. And once you've done this a few times, you get more used to what you're feeling in there. And I actually can feel the heart. And so I'm trying to get behind the heart and kind of try and push everything out in one piece. I don't want to break anything. Sometimes when you do this, they will poop because you're pushing on their intestine. And it just takes a few minutes, kind of, you're just trying to like loosen everything up. It is obviously all attached. <laughs> so the key here is to kind of be gentle, use gentle fingers. Like I said, you don't want to break, you know, the intestines or anything. All right, so now we're left with, basically we've got one thing attached still, and that's their intestine. Their, uh, their vent is down there. So we're gonna actually just cut all of this out. And we're gonna be careful to cut around this intestine so we don't break it and we don't wanna cut into the meat. A sharp knife just glides really easily. Sometimes if I need to see. There we go. So there he is. Scrape the inside out. Make sure there's nothing in there that we don't want. These are actually testicles. I believe they're testicles. I think from another video I watched, I learned they were testicles. So we, and then we're gonna take the neck off. So I just sit them up. I cut down on one side, kind of making like a V cut on both sides. Pop the neck back and then finish cutting. I wanna make sure that you know we've gotten all the esophagus and stuff out, make sure there's no more tubing left. And then into the sink. Um, everything again here is sanitized, even like my hose nozzle. I'm gonna make sure we get that inside really clean. Get the top really clean. Raining. One last look over, and in the ice water he goes. So that's one chicken from beginning to end, and we have either 20 or 19 left to do because I don't remember how many. I have. <laughs> so, um, anything else you wanted to add before we get really into it? No, let's get after it. All right, let's get to it.
right, that's the last one uh, for today. 21, actually, is what I had for those of you keeping count. I'm all caught up to Aaron. The only thing I can think of with this this thing is if it had a foot pedal. Yeah. So you could turn it on and off. And if you had an extension cord or something, maybe that would... They make foot pedal extension cords. Yeah, the problem is you got water everywhere, so you need like a waterproof foot pedal, but... Okay. That is the one bad thing, is trying to like reach under and... Yeah, you're holding the water, you're trying to turn it on and, and get it all up and rolling. Do you like doing this kind of stuff? I don't. It's okay. It's not like the worst thing in the world. I feel kind of like proud of us that we can do this. Yeah. I mean, I think it's a skill that you know not many people have, and I'm glad that I can. I'm glad I can do it. I'm glad that we can provide more meat for our community and for our family, independent of grocery stores and processors, and you know, we can do all of it. There's our bird. Okay, that's the last one. They'll sit in here for how long? I have to go do a Zoom call. Um, Ideally, they need to get down below 45 degrees. So okay. That's what we're looking for. All right, so they'll sit in here for a couple hours. We'll come back and we'll continue with processing at that point. Or packaging. Packaging. Yep. Packaging coming up. Okay. All righty, guys, we're back. Aaron's uh, been yapping on the phone for a while, so I got a chance to come down and and sanitize everything. We've moved everything out of here that didn't need to be here, and now this whole area has become more of our processing area. We've got tables that are sanitized. We've got our chickens ready to go. All the, the horror and muck and guck and everything else has been moved out of here. Uh, what's, the, what's the process? How does this thing work? Um, so we're gonna take them out of the water, um, dry them off a little bit. We're gonna package them. You're gonna dip them in hot water to do the heat shrink bags and we'll uh, put a label on them. Cool. So. Sweet and simple. Yeah. Okay, so these are our bags. Is there anything special about these bags? There is a heat shrink bag, we bought them on Amazon. Easy, easy. And putting them in here, is there a trick to put them in? Head. They don't have heads. Head end down. <laughs> oh, and I usually, just because the water will kind of collect in the cavity, I will kind of just make sure we get one more, one more drain out. Okay. So chickens are now encased in the bag. A uh, quick little hole goes in the front of each bag. That will allow air to, uh, to come out as we dunk these in the water, which will shrink the bags down. And I'll show you that here in a second. But we do have to poke this little hole. That will allow air to flow. Take the bag. Put a zip tie on it. And then we head over to a pot of boiling water. This pot of boiling water is right at 200 degrees, so we're gonna dunk this in, and then that'll shrink the bag. Takes about five seconds, and then nicely shrunk chicken.
them some pretty birds. <laughs> What's next? So I just dried them off, um, and then we've got, this is just the label that came with the bags, it's just the, the safe handling instructions, and I put the date and the weight on it, and then we attach another label with our like information on it as producers later. So this is just standard, you know, keep it refrigerated. Yeah. <laughs> Government warning. So this covers up that little tiny hole. Yeah, so this hole that you poked so that the air would come out and the bags would shrink, we need to try and find that. And you can feel it, and we can see it. I don't know if you'll be able to see it on camera, but, and then we stick the, stick the label on top of the hole. Cool. Time to weigh. I can handle this part. Kenzie helped us with this the other day. It was kind of funny. Three pounds, 90, 9.8 ounces. <laughs> All right. Three pounds, nine ounces. happy with the chicken experience? Yeah, I like to be done with the processing and stuff and we've got, you know, if we do this about every other day, we'll be done here in a week. A week or 10 yeah. days or so. We're getting, we're getting through it. So I think we could do, you know, the hard thing is just finding time, uninterrupted time where like either one of us isn't busy with other commitments and stuff. And I'd like to be done by Christmas though. That would be nice. That would be yeah. nice. And these go into the farm store yep. for sale at the farm store. Yes. Uh, or somebody's going to ask, how much How much did we have into each bird, do you think, by the time? Oh, um, it's tough this year because we had to buy, you know, we purchased a lot of equipment and stuff and, you know, being newbies and stuff like. Um, there was a learning curve, of course. There was a learning curve and stuff. Uh, we're charging $4.50 a pound. Um, I have asked a lot of people what they pay for fresh chickens in their area. And uh, you know it's it's generally three to five dollars. A lot of people being closer to five dollars. I will say we're not making a ton of money per bird. Not this year, no. yeah. Um, and I hope to get that price, our cost per bird, down um, in the future. So that like I mean I'm not gonna lie, I'd like to make more money on a chicken. Um, but we did this because I mean I ordered these birds in April. Um, you know because of COVID. Like I wanted to provide more meat for our community and, a, and a, you know, us control the supply chain. Mm -hmm. And so it wasn't, we're not gonna get rich doing this, but it's for our community, it's for our family, and it's about that taking control of your, of your food. So exactly. that's why we're doing it. There we go. Alrighty guys, thanks for hanging out with us today. The question, what came first, the chicken or the egg? Um, I don't know, but I know what's for dinner. Thanks guys, have a great week. Be sure to subscribe, follow along as we continue to explore the ranch life and escape the ordinary. Hit subscribe, hit the little bell button so you get notifications when new videos come out as well. We'll see you next time right here on our Wyoming Life.